Hello everybody, it's me Dave. Welcome to the Wizard's Tower. I have an unboxing for you guys today. I have a couple of things that I want to show you. Uh, the first thing, first thing is something little. And uh, if any of you, uh, this is a fun little item. If any of you guys are Harry Potter fans, this, and I'll, uh, and I'll put a graphic up of it. This is Bertie Bot's Every Flavor Bean from the Harry Potter Show um, movie series. Um, I remember the first time I ever saw these was at the theater. It was one of the Harry Potter movies uh, I, went to, I went to see at the theater and they had these for sale. And um, yeah, I got them. And it's uh, quite fascinating. Um, if you don't know Harry Potter, Shame on you, for one. I'm going to put some garbage right here. I'll pick that up later. Um, shame on you, for one. But uh, if you don't, the, uh, the Birdie Bots Every Flavored Bean, um, they're featured in the, in the movie. And basically, it's a mix of nice flavors and yucky flavors. So uh, let, let's pick one and let's see what I get. So this is the bean. I'm not gonna, I'll just bring this right up to the camp. So that's it. Kind of a little gray and black bean. Um, what do you think this bean's gonna taste like? Um, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put this bean right here. And while you're watching, if you have a guess of what this bean tastes like, put a comment down below. I'm gonna do the second unboxing. And then at the end of the show, I will eat the bean and I'll tell you what it tastes like. Uh, so we'll put this guy right here. He'll be there for safekeeping. <laughs> All right, now for the main event, the big unboxing. This is, I picked this up today. I had to have a, um, a treat yourself day, me and me and Matt, and uh, we went to Barnes and Nobles and we did a little, little treat ourselves day. Uh, we uh, went out for breakfast and, you know, it was, uh, it's been kind of a, you know, it was a bumpy weekend for us, to say the least. Anyways, so we had a treat ourselves day, and I picked up at Barnes & Noble's, of all places, the Modern Spellcasters Tarot. And I'm going to unbox it right here. Uh, now, this is the back of the box. Um, you can see uh, it's got four, four cards in there, but I'm going to take the cards out, and we're going to go through a few. Um, all right, so let's... Uh, Let's cut, let's cut into this. Here we go. It's, oh, it's like Christmas. I feel like Santa just left. <laughs> yes, he gave me jelly beans and cards. That's a pretty good Christmas, I think. All right, so <clears throat> this is the first time I'm seeing the inside. Well, we together. It's the first time we're seeing the inside of this. I just wonder if there's something else I have to cut. Oh. Oh, that's pretty cool. So the way the box works, it's like a little magnetic, oh, come on, that's cool. A uh, little magnetic flap. All right, we pull that open. And uh, yeah, it's got a little, what that little string is. But there's the book. Um, yeah, it's a lot of, a lot of information they go through each card i'm um, just trying to look at some of the um the imagery so yeah probably a typical book that goes with a with a set of tarot uh, basically describes the cards one each one by each okay so this is the deck of cards okay so let's get these open shall we um I probably should use the scissors, but I don't want to, I just don't want to nick one of the cards. There we go. We'll uh, open these up. And we'll take a look at a few. So, if you watched my Wizards Tarot card review, um, I, I spoke a little bit about my tarot reading, and I had mentioned that I draw a lot of, when I do my readings, I draw a lot of my, 
intuition or what the cards speak to me through the imagery on the cards. Um, so me, imagery is very important. Okay. So we're going to put these here. And we're going to take a look at uh, some of these cards. So this here is the Fool card. Now, let me see. I wear my glasses so I can see the screen way out in front of me. But up close, I don't need them. Ah, so this is the Fool card. Oh, this is nice. Very similar to... Um, you know, the Wizard's Tarot, the image just pops right out. Um, so this, this Fool card right here um, definitely is speaking leap of faith. Um, put your best foot forward and, uh, you know, trust. And that's what I get from this Fool card here. Um, let's look at this next card. This is the Magician. Well, I see the Magician there. He's standing there. He's got a, well, one snake down by his feet there. Uh, but he's he's got what looks like his wand pointing towards the sky and lightning um, above his head. And to me, what what jumps out for me is like when a, when a wizard, you know, either creates lightning or creates something. So I see creation there and I see, you know, behold and stop. Hold on. Pay attention to me. Um, that's what I get from this magician card. Let me see. What do we get here? Oh, the high priestess. Um, ah, wow, I it took me a minute. Usually, I form my thought on the very initial image that I, when I first see that card. But with this one, it was almost a double take because there's a little baby <coughs> there right in front of the High Priestess. And she's reading from a book. And I took notice to the blackened out of her face. And she's just like, almost looks like a mannequin. Uh, with no with no features um, and to me it says arcane or it's almost like she's teaching um, a young innocent mind um, more in like enlightened knowledge uh, the teaching of a baby that their minds are not tainted by society they're wide open they're as open a mind that can exist and now you take that and you add enlightenment to that it's you know it's like the two greatest elements to enlightenment is you know the best thing is an open mind um look at the the um the empress card i see almost like a strong woman almost like a warrior woman uh and she's got her i guess that's a bull nearby but she looks like she's going into battle. So this this card says strong woman um, maybe go into battle for you or depending on the context of, of card uh, against you. You know, so that's that's what that card's telling me. Um, the emperor, very similar but for a male image. So when I look at this card, I see the emperor. I see someone, um, strong guidance, a strong influencer. Um, that's what I see, like uh, like you're going to seek guidance from, you know, a great king or something along those lines. That's what I see from that card. Okay, we've got uh, the Hierophant, which is also a very interesting card. This one, you know, I see... Well, see a strong figure, or let's say a figure that's in power and two subjects bowing before them. I say figure because if you notice, there's a like a block in front of this figure's face. And to me, that means uh, to, to strike gender from the, the, the image, even though, t uh, you know, historically the Hierophant's been male. Very interesting card. Ah, and let's go to the Lover's card. Oh, this is a beautiful card. I see a very similar to the Wizard's Tarot. With this card, yeah, I see two lovers um, embarking on you know their, their journey of love. Um, you, you see the rainbow and the heart glowing above them. Um, almost uh, tells me that their love is blessed and that their love is strong. Um, let's do, oh, these are, th I'll tell you what, these cards, I, I like these cards, I'm going to say. 
um, the chariot. And again, for me, with, with most decks, the chariot for me has always meant, you know, travel, journey, or something, you know, something along those lines. And, and that's what I get from this uh, card here. Uh, the chariot, you know, it, it speaks journey, it speaks travel. You, know, you see a, you know, a horse pulling a chariot uh, amongst the stars. Oh boy, let's let's do a few more. Uh, the strength card. I get. I see two strong figures. Um, a strong female who's confident, but she's also on a on a lion, which is also a confident king of the jungle. So this card is telling me that there is strength here. Um, you know, depending on the context, it could be saying be strong or stay strong or, you know, but there's, but there's strength there. Um, I'm going to pull out this next one is the Hermit card. And again, the Hermit has always meant for me uh, to withdraw and to become a Hermit and to reflect on something. That's kind of what I have always gotten from Hermit cards. And, um, and this one is, is the same. You know, I see a lonely man. He's walking through the woods with nothing but a candlelight. Uh, that, that reflecting um, in solitude. So that's what that card is. Uh, let's pull out the Wheel of Fortune. The Wheel of Fortune. Interesting. You see the monkey who's blindfolded uh, and... You see the wheel, you see a, a snake on it, and I'm not sure what that other animal is. But um, the Wheel of Fortune, this card is, is telling me, accept your fate. Trust in where fate is taking you. That's what you know, I get from the, the blindfolded monkey um, and the whole Wheel of Fortune card concept. That, that, yeah, that, I mean, that's what I'm getting from that card. Okay, we're going to pull out the Justice card. So what I get from this card is uh, justice, decision. Um, either you're going to have to make a decision or, you know, you're a, dead with a, a big decision uh, stands before you. It's a whole, you know, you see the, the, the woman holding the scales. The Hanged Man. Now, this is an interesting rendition of the Hanged Man. Uh, typically, um, Hanged Man cards have looked a bit different. My Wizard's Tarot Hanged Man card is a bit different as well. Uh, and it's funny because Matt pointed out today that the typical Hanged Man usually have a, a man hanging, a lot of times upside down. And the Wizard's Tarot card, the Hanged Man... It just shows a guy sitting in the room, you know, up in his room at a desk. But the picture on the wall behind him, which I hadn't noticed, is a picture of the hanged man, a man hanging upside down. Well, this card here, the man is bound in, I don't know what that is, but he's bound with straps and he's hanging right side up. Um, this this hanged man says confined, um, bound. Um, could mean a, feel, a feeling of trapped. It could mean, you know, on the converse of that, a need to break free of the, the restraints. Uh, um, that's the hanged man. Um, let's go the death card. Now, death usually means the end of something and the beginning of something. Um, and I do. I get from this card... You see Death himself walking, kind of looks like he's walking as you're facing the card to the to the left, um, like heading out on a journey. That's the Death card. Um, temperance. <clears throat> the Temperance card, I see um, that looks like a man, and he's pouring liquid from one jug to another that could mean sharing that could mean 
uh, uh, like a celebratory thing that could mean peace. Um, this card could mean, you know, from what I'm getting from it, it, it's, it would depend on the, the context, but I, <clears throat> I get almost like an offering or I'm giving you half of what I have, you know. Um, the Devil card. Wow, interesting. This Devil card, to me, is very similar to uh, the Dark Lord card in my Wizard's Tarot. Um, obviously a bit different, but again, you see the Devil in, the, in this card uh, with two uh, restraints, which tells me, even with the, with the rendition in the Wizard's Tarot, it tells me um, control or being restrained. Right? Because the devil um, is restraining those two subjects. Um, I'm going to do one more. I could go through all of these. I really could. Um, but, oh, I could go through this whole deck. This is the tower card. Now, the tower, again, is a pretty pretty common between a lot of decks of, of how the imagery speaks to me. Um, a little different in this card than in my Wizards Tarot deck. So if you if you caught my Wizards Tarot uh, review, I had mentioned that the Tower card in that deck has a double meaning. It could mean a big storm's coming, but in the Wizards Tarot card, the Tower is intact. So that could also mean you will withstand the storm that's coming. This card's a little different. It's speaking a little different to me in that, yes, it says a big storm is coming, but I don't see the tower withstanding. So this coming up in a reading is something that truly has a single meaning to me, and that's a storm is coming. Uh, chaos will ensue. Um, I'm going to stop there, but this is... It's the Modern Spellcaster's... Uh, Tano deck, I believe is what it's called. Yes, Modern Spellcaster's Tarot. Um, so that's that's that. What a beautiful, 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 beautiful deck. Okay, so that was the Spellcaster, the Modern Spellcaster's Tarot. Um, I can't wait. I'm going to have to uh, start doing some readings with this. I know the Wizard's Tarot has been my go-to deck for doing readings because it speaks to me so well. Um, I want to um, I want to give this a try. I honestly feel that these are also speaking to me at that level where I'll be able to do some readings with them. I'm anxious to break them out and actually start doing some. I'm also thinking of doing um, some online readings. Tell me what you think in the um, in the comments down below. Um, I've seen other folks do live readings for people if if and when I do um, any live YouTube sessions. Uh, so let me let me know what you think. Would would you be willing or you would you would you be willing to have a reading done by me? <laughs> okay. Also, if you like the video and what you see, please like and subscribe. The buttons are down there. They always do it like that. Um, and now, we're not done. So, the Birdie Box bean. Have you guys been commenting down below what you think this bean flavor is? Let me put us up to the camera again. You can kind of get a look. All right. I'll spin it around a little bit. See there? Comment down below. Let's see how many people get it right. Uh, here we go. Going to eat it. 